R E E House. The Tree House. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tree House. I'm Kelsey, and I'm super excited to have you here because we have a jam packed episode of Fall Fun. So let's go ahead and check it out. You can always count on the Shelby Police and Fire Open House to bring the fun and action. Let's take a look. Hello my friends, Lizzie from the Burgess Shabbos Nature Center here today, and I have a very exciting book to read for you. I think you're going to like it. Are you ready? The Very Impatient Caterpillar by Ross Burak. Hey, what are you guys doing? We're going to metamorphosize. Meta what now? Transform into butterflies. Right, right. I knew that. Wait, you're telling me I can become a butterfly? Yes. With wings? Yes. For real? Yes. Well, wait for me. Now what? Build your chrysalis. Chrysalis, right, right, I knew that. What? How did you do that? Is it a spin or more of a twirl? Am I a butterfly yet? Ugh. Okay, now what? Just be patient and let nature take its course. Patience. Right, right. I got this. Do you think he has this? Hmm. Am I a butterfly yet? Nope. How about now? Now? No. Be patient. Okay, I have a question. Not yet. You don't even know what I was going to ask. <sighs> Fine. Ask. How's your day going? Also, am I a butterfly yet? No. Just be patient. We're trying to metamorphosize. Okay, okay. Obviously, I know this, but do you know how long this takes? Two weeks. Right, right. Two weeks. Two weeks? Oh, 
what am I gonna do in here for two weeks? Can I get a comic book or something? What if I want a snack? Hello, two pizzas please. My address? A chrysalis. Click. Hello, hello. How long have I been in here? What if I need the bathroom? Anyone wanna play a game? It's still day one. This is taking forever. That's it. I feel metamorphosized enough. Look out world, feast your eyes on this beautiful butterfly. How do I look? Transformed? Time to spread my wings and fly. Do you think he's gonna be able to fly? Let's find out. Wait, flap, 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 flap. Where are my wings? Splat. Ah, time for a new approach. Ah, okay. You can do this. You can be patient. Oh, who am I kidding? You are the little caterpillar that could. I'm the little caterpillar that couldn't. Get a grip. You can. I can't, I can't. You can. I can't. You can. I can't. You can. I can't. I can. Can't. Can be patient. Patient is all in the mind. Be one with the chrysalis. Deep breath in and out. Look, day six is getting closer. I'm doing it. Just be patient. Just be patient. Two weeks later. I did it! I'm a butterfly! You know, I do feel transformed. Starting now, I'm gonna be way more patient. That's great. Hey, where are all you going? We're migrating. Migrating, right, right. Wait for me. Are we there yet? Did you think he was very patient? I don't think so. Hello everyone, are you ready to do some signing with me today? Perfect. Now for our sign today, we are actually going to be learning the sign for Scarecrow. Scarecrow is actually going to be our craft today, so we're going to learn how to sign it. Do you think you're ready to do it? You are? All right, let's go ahead and grab our signing hands, and for this one, you're going to need both of them. So. Our first part of this sign starts with us being a little, well, scared. Have you ever been scared before? Usually when you're scared of something, you kind of jump back. And we may move our hands like this, right? Oh, kind of like we're surprised. So for scarecrow, the first part of our sign is scare. So our hands are gonna go up like this to the side. Sometimes I do this, when my big brother try to scare me. Do you ever go, <gasps> do you think you can try? Here we go. <gasps> big face too, because we want to show that we're <gasps> scared. Can you do that? Ooh, that was a good one. Let's try it together. Are you ready? <gasps> wow, you're pretty scared, aren't you? Now it's time to learn the second part of the sign, because we have the scare crow. So we're going to need both of our hands because this is going to be the second part where we make our scarecrow. So we're going to take one hand and make a V. You may also notice this is like when we do the peace sign, right? We're going to flip it around and make the sign for V. Then we're going to flip it over so they become our scarecrow legs and this is our scarecrow's body. Then we're gonna take her other finger like it's the post and put it right behind. And then this is our second part of the sign for Scarecrow. You think you can do that? So make your V and take your other pointer finger, flip your V over, and there you got it, your Scarecrow. You see that? Now let's put them both together. Let's get scared and make our Scarecrow. Scared and make your Scarecrow. You think you can do it? Let's try it together. We're scared. Crow. 
Very good. One more time. Scare, crow. I think you got it. Now make sure you go ahead and try it and practice it yourself. And maybe stick around to watch our craft so you can learn how to make your very own scarecrow. Hello everyone and welcome to Craft Corner. You may notice I have some things surrounding me like shirts, pants, even some corn husks here. The reason for that is we are going to be building our very own scarecrow. Have you ever seen a scarecrow before? They hang outside like this, right? Do you know what they're there for? They're to protect any fruits, vegetables, anything growing in our garden to scare away crows and other birds that might come up and try to sneak an apple when we're not watching. And believe me, I want my apples for my own, right? So we want to build a scarecrow. So we're going to build one together. You wanna help me? Perfect. Our first step is to start with our scarecrow's body. So you see, I have a shirt here, pretty close to the shirt I'm wearing because we're going to be building a scarecrow version of me. So we have our shirt here, and now we're going to stuff it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down to the bottom of the sleeves. So I'm gonna take one sleeve, I'm gonna use some twine that has some wire in it. And I'm gonna bunch it up here because I'm gonna be stuffing my scarecrow. You can use twine, yarn, anything you may have. And now I'm gonna do the other sleeve. And you can use any clothes you have too. So I like the idea of using maybe something you don't use anymore or maybe something that doesn't fit or maybe has a hole in it, something you don't care about. And now we're going to stuff our scarecrow. You may have noticed that sometimes scarecrows have hay or straw inside of them, right? Well, this time we are actually going to be using plastic bags. That might be something that you have just laying around at home from a lot of grocery shopping. So we're going to reuse those today. So let me get out some of my plastic bags here. And I'm going to start by going into the sleeves. And you see how we blocked off the end? So none of those bags are gonna go through. And we're gonna stuff, stuff, stuff. So now we have the sleeves just about filled. Do you see that there? Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave it just like this, put it to the side because now I'm going to do the same thing to the pants because our scarecrow needs some legs, right? So remember how we tied off the bottom of our, of our sleeves? We're gonna do the same thing to the bottom of our pants because we don't want our scarecrow falling apart. All right. So I'm gonna move our scarecrow's legs so I can add the shirt. Now how I'm going to add the shirt is through safety pinning it. Now you can use glue, you could even think about stapling, whatever is the easiest. But you might need a grown up for this part. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, is just safety pin it through. gonna poke on through and I'm gonna do it all the way around. All right now that we've got our pants attached to our shirt we're going to stuff the rest of our shirt. So we've got our body of our scarecrow built now it's time to build the head. You can use a foam ball. You may see here, I have a big bouncy ball for us to use, even an old volleyball, anything that's round. So we're going to go ahead and put it on burlap. So this is just another material that you often see when it comes to scarecrows, but you can use whatever you have to. Again, get creative. So I'm going to go ahead and fold over our burlap so it covers our ball here because we don't want to have our scarecrow to have a blue head for this one. Though yours could look pretty cool with the blue head. So now I'm going to just bunch it up like this. We want that extra material to hang over 
because it's going to be kind of like the neck for a scarecrow. You see that? Now remember how we used the twine or string that you had to tie the ends of the sleeves and the pant legs? We're going to do the same thing, but around the head of our scarecrow. And as you can see here, we now have secured the material onto our head. But, hmm, is it missing anything? Maybe some eyes? Maybe a nose, great big smile. It's time for us to make the face of our scarecrow. So I'm gonna put this lovely head down here and take out some felt. Now, felt is just another material, another fabric. So you can go ahead and use whatever you have at home, maybe some buttons, some stickers, or even color onto your fabric. So I'm going to cut out a triangle actually two triangles, because our yellow is going to be the eyes of our scarecrow. And we got our two eyes. Now it's time for us to make a nose and a smile. It's kind of similar if you've ever seen the jack-o'-lantern, how they have some triangle eyes. If you can see that one. So let's go ahead and grab our scarecrow. Pick out a side, I think it's gonna be this one I use. We're gonna start assembling it, so putting it together. Now I have some glue here. You can use a hot glue gun, whatever might work best. So we're gonna go ahead and put our glue onto our black smile here. Flip it over, then I'm gonna press, ready? I'm gonna hold it down and press, 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 press against it, making sure it's sticking against our fabric. Now it might take some time to dry, right? So it doesn't fall off, but right now, we have a nice smile. Now it's time to add the rest of our face, right? And look at what we have there. That's a scarecrow face. But I'm not done with the head just yet. As you can see, our jack-o'-lantern's wearing something. This is gonna be the hat to her scarecrow. I think it looks pretty good and really like a scarecrow now. Now it's time for us to put it all together. Let's go take a look. Lizzie Schultz here from the Burgess Shabbush Nature Center, and I have an animal friend for you to meet today. Today, we are meeting Leona, the leopard gecko. Why do you think she's called a leopard gecko? Hmm, do you think it might be because of these beautiful spots that she has on her back? Well, then you would be right. Those spots help her camouflage. Camouflage, maybe you've heard that word before. That's something that helps an animal hide in their environment. You know, like when you're playing hide and seek. Animals play hide and seek too, so that they don't get eaten by other animals. Leona is a leopard gecko and they are found in the Middle East. So you would not find one in your backyard. They like more arid or desert environments. You may notice that her tail is a different color than the rest of her body. That's because she is one of the species that can lose their tail when in danger. So if a predator or an animal that wants to eat Leona shows up, she could drop that tail and it would continue to wiggle so that the rest of her could get away. Now she also uses that tail to store fat. In the desert, when food is abundant or there's lots of it, she can eat so much and store her fat in her tail. And then if it's like a dry season and there isn't as much food, she can actually live off the fat in her tail for quite some time. It's pretty amazing. Leona is a carnivore. So even though she's small, she's still pretty fierce. And if you were a cricket or a mealworm, you would find her terrifying. So Leona is a wonderful hunter and she is able to hunt insects and worms and other prey items like that. 
If you would like to come see Leona and visit her other animal friends, join us at the Burgess Shadbush Nature Center. You can find out more information on our website and we are free to visit. Hi friends, it's Miss Bethany at the Shelby Township Library here today to tell you about some of our cool new books. We have some picture books, the ones you could read before bedtime with your grown up. They have lots of fun pictures and really silly stories like this one called Battle of the Books by Melanie Ellsworth and illustrated by James Ray Sanchez. This is about all the books that live on a little boy named Josh's bookshelf in his room. And they're all battling, jostling for a good place on the shelf, hoping that he'll choose them to read at story time when he goes to bed. But oh no, pirate book fell off the shelf. Can they stop arguing long enough to save pirate book and see who will be chosen to be read at bedtime? Maybe the hero book who saves the pirate book will get read. You'll have to read the story to see which one Josh chooses and if they can save pirate book. Another fun new one we have is Penguin and Penelope by Selena Yoon. There are a lot of stories about this adorable little character, Penguin. Here's his newest adventure with Penelope the elephant. She's a little elephant that he finds stuck in the mud, so he rescues her and helps her try to find her family, and along the way they become friends. So if you like animals and sweet stories about nice friendships, here's a good book for you. And speaking of elephants, here's a new non-fiction book we have. That's one that you can read to learn facts about animals like elephants or other animals. This one's called Do Baby Elephants Suck Their Trunks? by Ben Lurwell, now illustrated by Catherine McEwen. This book teaches us all about how animals are a lot like people. Little baby elephants, for example, use their trunks just like you would use your fingers and hands to touch and explore things in the world, and sometimes they even suck on their trunk like a baby would suck on its bum. And for our older friends who are reading chapter books, here's a new one by Alan Gratz called Two Degrees and it has three different stories of kids facing climate disasters all around the world, whether it's hurricanes or wildfires. These three stories are somehow connected. There's only two degrees of separation between these kids and the fight that they're doing to save the world and help the climate on our earth. We hope that you'll come to the library soon to check out all of these great new stories and see what else we have that's new. Just like we go outside and explore, so do our animals here in Shelby Township. So let's go ahead and grab our binoculars and do some exploring.
All right, everyone, we have reached the end of our episode, but your adventure does not end here. Go ahead and grab those binoculars and put on those hiking boots and go have some fun. So until next time, play fair, play safe, and play together. Bye-bye.